look, this is the insole and it's actually got a little rib uh, in there for the stitches to go through. Okay, we're starting on another project, this time for those that are familiar with shoemaking techniques. You'll notice that the hold fast and the insole is all the way up to the edge, uh, which means I'll be doing a Norwegian welt or a Norwegian stitch here. Um, so uh, I think the, the main reason for that is because I was having trouble hitting the uh, previously made uh, inseaming holes on the on the last project and I think being able to just create a whole new line of stitches above the the feather edge will sort of just circumvent that issue and it'll um, give me experience with a different shoemaking uh, construction method so uh, looking forward to that uh, that was a just another pair of Meermans, same last, same size, but oddly enough, these fit originally a little bit bigger than the Balmorals in the previous videos, um, but they still kind of cut with my toes a little bit. So I wanted to um, I wanted to just tear them apart and put them back together on these new lasts. So speaking of these lasts, these were made uh, with Stephen Lowe at the last Maker House course in Eastbourne. Um, and they're, I guess you could say, bespoke lasts. I, I haven't uh, tried them out or anything. You know, the, these will be the first test of whether they fit or not. But um, it was a great little four day course that teaches you how to make lasts to your own measurements. And uh, you leave with a pair of more or less bespoke lasts. So uh, excited to see how those fit in the end. So let's get to it.
I'm here at uh, Beto's Leatherworks to see Steve, showing my work so far. Um, and we've decided that this issue here with the heel, uh, it's just coming in too far and that's gonna, it's already creating an uh, aesthetic problem, but could create some fit or wear issues as well down the line. So um, I'm not married to the idea of a 360 degree uh, stitch here. So I think we're just gonna tear apart the stitching in the back and then just tack it all down uh, from there. Doing a little autopsy here to see what was causing the heel issue. And uh, it was pretty clearly in this case just that the insole I trimmed too short. So we're taking a little di bit of a different approach here. I'm just going to take the last out now so that we can make sure that we're uh, securing the upper to the insole all right.
Okay, here's the finished product. Day night sole. Chrome XL leather. So I wanted to debrief on these and talk about some of the mistakes I made because if it wasn't clear by the fact that I'm doing this in my bedroom, I'm not a professional. <laughs> so, um, you know, hopefully y'all can uh, learn from some of the mistakes I've made um, or to the extent that you saw any that I don't mention here uh, and you're a shoemaker or done some of this yourself, uh, feel free to comment down below uh, and give me some tips. So. Number one here, my stitch length on the Norwegian stitch is definitely too long. Uh, I think I used nine millimeter as opposed to the sort of five to seven millimeter that I've seen in other places. Um, and that stitch length is kind of exacerbated by the fact that the thread is, is more thin than it should be. Um, usually with these Norwegian stitches, the shoemaker will actually make their own thread um, by, you know, putting together multiple strands and waxing it themselves. And the then product is, uh, is pretty thick compared to what you'll find from the actual thread making firms. So the second thing to do with the Norwegian stitch is how it gets pretty jaggedy in some places. Um, and that's because I was going all inside out with the in inseaming all. Um, now I've seen some people go outside in entirely and, uh, I wasn't really doing well with that. So, uh, the best way to probably, ha the best way to do it probably would have been to poke the hole in the upper on the outside and then go back around and poke the hole through the end sole. The next thing I want to talk about was toe puffs and the lack thereof. Um, I did not include toe puffs in these. This one's completely unstructured and just sort of as a little science experiment, um, I put some Hirschkleber on this one uh, and uh, it's definitely sort of retaining the toe shape a little bit better, but obviously, as you would expect, the symmetry is not ideal, so uh, not really a mistake because I made the choice to do that, but uh, it was a little bit of a weird choice and uh, the symmetry is going to look kind of off uh, because of that. The next thing is the heel issue that you saw me dealing with at Beto's. Um, so that could have been caused by uh, just trimming the insole a little too short, um, but I think it may have actually been because I didn't actually last the uppers and the heels at all before stitching because Thing was just sort of sitting uh, in a relatively nice spot where I wanted it to be. Um, and I think that just sort of left a little too much wiggle room for um, the insole to move as I was tightening each stitch. And the end result was that it sort of just got pulled in. And the last thing I wanted to talk about here uh, was that I used insole leather for the midsole. Um, and I sort of just figured this out as I was doing the finishing for these, but also uh, because I was listening to the Stitch Down podcast yesterday um, with uh, Nathan Florsheim, NF Bootmaker on Instagram, um, and he was saying that he uses sole leather for his midsoles because the, the tighter, denser leather just sort of polishes up and sands down a little bit better. Um, so definitely this softer insole leather and was sort of making it harder to get uh, a nice compact uh, sanded edge and thus, you know, not nearly as nice of a, of a shiny glossy edge in the end. So um, that's sort of unfortunate, but um, definitely something good learned from that. All right, last thing I wanted to do was just say thank you to some of the people who helped me out on this project. Uh, Nick Bardsley, 6am shoemaker on Instagram, he measured up my feet there for those last that we made at the last Maker House course. Um, so thank you, Nick. They fit really well. Um, 
Next was uh, Mikhail at Arno Shoes um, on Instagram. He uh, puts out a bunch of tutorials and information um, that proved really helpful. He's got one specifically for Norwegian stitching, which was uh, super helpful going into this. Um, Nathan Florsheim, NF Bootmaker on Instagram. Um, he helped me out after I had broken all my alls by tipping me off to the C.S. Osborne interchangeable um, sort of manual change all. Steve at Beato's Leatherworks, of course, was a huge help getting the soles stitched on uh, since it was a rubber sole. We just did it with the uh, Landis. And beyond that, he was just sort of a huge help with, uh, you know, giving me recommendations for fixing the heel issue that I had um, before bringing him in there. Um, and then finally, of course, Francis Wapplinger, who I did the lesson with back in New York, um, which I have a video of uh, up on my YouTube. And he's just been super helpful since then with any questions I have or anything like that. Um, so thanks Francis and thanks everybody else for helping. Thanks y'all. Thank you all for watching. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any tips or questions or anything and uh, look forward to uh, finishing those pairs and posting that video as well. All right. See ya.